The universe as we understand it began with the Big Bang, a singularity of infinite density and infinite temperature. There is much speculation over what happened during the early phase of the universe, but in the seconds following the Big Bang, the universe cooled and inflated rapidly. But in order to understand the vast timescales on which the universe operates, we're going to need to change the scale a bit. This box represents one year. This is 10 years. And this is 100 years. Here you can see the average human life expectancy in the UK of 80 years. Let's shrink this down into a new box, which now represents 100 years. Following the same process, we have 1,000 years and 10,000 years. But we're going to need to squash the box down once more. This is 12,000 years, which is the length of human civilization on Earth. We'll come back to this later. This is 100,000 years. And here we get to our first big milestone. 379,000 years after the Big Bang. This is when the universe had cooled sufficiently for atoms to form. Let's continue and make a box of a million years. And then if we shrink this down again... This is 10 million years. And here we reach 66 million years, which is how long ago the dinosaurs became extinct on Earth. And finally we reach 100 million years. This is such a large number for humans to grasp, but it's the smallest number in which our timeline of the universe makes sense. Here we have 400 million years. And this is when the first stars began to form in the universe. Soon after, the first galaxies began to form. At around 800 million years, this is the extent at which the Hubble Ultra Deep Field can see back in time. Fast forwarding, we pass the billion year mark. And at 1.2 billion years, our own galaxy, the Milky Way, begins to form. In order to view the timescale of the universe properly, we're going to need to split our chart a little bit. Here we can fast forward to 9 billion years after the Big Bang. This is when our own star, the Sun, formed. In order to see a little bit of detail, we're going to have to zoom in just a little bit. Remember, each one of these boxes represents one million years. So now we can see clearly the point at which the Sun formed, around 9,232,000,000 years after the Big Bang. This is here, around 27 million years after the birth of the Sun, that the Earth formed along with the rest of the planets. And here, 163 million years after the formation of the Sun, the first signs of water on Earth. And it is here, 260 million years after the Earth formed, that life first appeared. Microorganisms living around the hydrothermal vents underneath the oceans. Later, prokaryotes would appear, single celled organisms. This period highlighted here is the late heavy bombardment 
in which the Earth was under a constant barrage from asteroid impacts during the formation of the solar system. Crossing the 10 billion year mark, the Earth's magnetic field begins to form. And then, at 11.9 billion years, 2.7 billion years after the formation of the Earth, complex life in the form of eukaryotes begins to form in the oceans. These were the first life forms with a nucleus and a membrane. Our next milestone is the formation of the first land plants. This led to a rapid increase in the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere and reduced the carbon dioxide. This ultimately led to a global ice age in which the Earth was called a snowball. At 13.1 billion years, the Earth forms its ozone layer, crucial to the protection of life on land. And very soon after this, 4 billion years after the formation of the Earth, we have the Cambrian Explosion. In this event, most major animal phyla appeared in the fossil record, and it resulted in major diversification of organisms. Before this event, most organisms were simple. This is the key milestone in which modern creatures can trace back their lineage. Around 290 million years later, we have the Permian-Triassic extinction event, which is the worst extinction event in the history of the Earth, where 96% of marine species and 70% of terrestrial vertebrates were wiped out. This paved the way for the rise of the dinosaurs in the preceding Triassic, Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. At 13 billion 568 million years, the first dinosaurs appeared followed closely by the oldest mammal. This is around the time that Stegosaurus appeared. But you have to wait until here before you get a glimpse of Tyrannosaurus rex and Triceratops. These creatures lived 108 million years apart. So a T-Rex is closer to us than to a Stegosaurus. At the end of the Cretaceous period, the dinosaurs are wiped out in an asteroid that kills half of all animal species. And this allows mammals to become the dominant species on Earth. Now we have to zoom in again. At 13 billion 798 million years, or four and a half billion years since the formation of the Earth, we see the first signs of the creatures that are modern humans. We are now only 200,000 years in the past, and human existence is but a speck against the timeline of the universe. As we zoom in further, we can see it took 150,000 years until humans began expanding across the world. And we have to get all the way to this point 12,000 years ago to see the start of human civilization. Everything that we know and in recorded history appears in this box. Here you can see the Stone Age, the Bronze Age, the Iron Age, the Roman Empire all laid out across human history. The dots represent the American Revolution and the moon landing. This is how insignificant we are in the scale of the universe. The green represents human civilization. And once we zoom back up to our largest scale, it no longer even registers. Before we continue, here you can see the ages of the Earth overlaid on this diagram. The vast distances across time become apparent. We are an insignificant speck against this tapestry, but even the dinosaurs were around for a relatively short period of time against Earth's long history. It took an immensity of time for life to grow into what we know it today. So what does the future hold in store? Well, in a mere million years, the star Betelgeuse will go supernova. Around this time, the Great Pyramids of Giza will also erode away into nothing. Another hundred million years, and the Earth will have likely been struck by an asteroid 10 kilometers in diameter. Another 500 million, and we'll have been hit by a gamma ray burst. 
800 million years in the future, when the universe is 15 billion 200 million years old, complex life on Earth will become impossible, as the sun continues to heat the Earth. In 4 billion years, the Andromeda Galaxy will collide with the Milky Way, merging the two into a new super galaxy. And in 5 billion years, when the universe is 20 billion years old, the sun will grow into a red giant and swallow what is left of the Earth. Everything past this point starts to break the boundaries of our scale. If we shrink everything down, the entire history of the universe so far, and 8 billion years into the future, down into this tiny square, then we can see that this represents 100 billion years. And this, 2 trillion, 500 billion years. But even this timescale is nothing. After the sun becomes a red giant, it will then shrink down to become a white dwarf. The sun will live on as a white dwarf for trillions and trillions and trillions of years. In fact, the number is so large that we can't even draw it with squares anymore. At this point, the sun will finally die. But that's not the end for the universe. The universe will continue on until all the stars have died and all that remains is black holes. Then the black holes will slowly evaporate away due to Hawking radiation over vast cosmological timescales. 10 to the 30 might seem like a huge number, but the timescale until the heat death of the universe is even bigger. There's simply no way for humans to grasp the size of these numbers. All we can do is take comfort that we live in the golden age of the universe, on a nice planet, around a nice star, in a nice part of the cosmos.